Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I realise I haven't done anything very much on the Arctic uh, for a, a few weeks. It's partially because I haven't really uh, wanted to. Uh, and uh, Margot does such a good job at recording this day after day. And I really suggest if you want to go into a little bit more uh, detail uh, than the uh, weekly YouTube videos that you uh, subscribe to her on subscribe staff. Anyway, I'm just going to give a few little things and uh, make sure that you don't watch the segment on what um, Paul Beckwith has just uh, revealed. So anyway, let's let's go. Okay, so uh, this is what uh, the sort of official data, it depends which data set you look at, but most of them seem to agree uh, that uh, this is, um, uh, you know, the second, uh, the second uh, least ice extent after 2012, although I think I might have some more to say about this. So, anyway. So, uh, in a way, uh, I haven't seen the need to be following um, the satellite pictures on NASA World View, partially because um, yeah, it's so, the area is so covered in cloud um, that it's very hard to make anything from it. And uh, but you can, uh, you can identify those areas uh, that are quite close to the pole, um, you know, that, that are breaking up. But this, this was it, this did it for me. This is, uh, this is what the Polish Stern encountered uh, all the way to the North Pole. It's basically just slush and uh, it's being, all the slush is being uh, kind of, classified as this, it's all sea ice extent. So, yeah, so if if you've got slush like this, it, it's still ice. Okay, and um, this came up from Sam Karana. Um, he is saying uh, that the According to this, the, 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 the uh, sea ice extent was 3.834 million square kilometers, where the extent um, in 2012, September the 17th, was 3.387 million square kilometers. So he is asking, will sea ice reach a record low this month, or is Arctic ice already at a record low? Keep in mind that NSIDC counts areas of sea ice even when they contain as little as 15% um, ice, while there are other ways of calculating the state of uh, sea ice. Yeah, quite. That's my point. It always has been. Uh, and this is what um, uh, Zach Labe has come up with. Uh, second lowest on record according to the JAXA data. Um, yeah, and you can see uh, just exactly kind of what that all means in terms of the uh, the past. And uh, looking at um, at NASA worldview, I just decided just to bypass it because it looks a bloody mess. Uh, but I listened to Margot last night and of course she's really adept um, at identifying really important things. But I, uh, I've also got the skills but I just don't have the patience or the time. So because uh, I know what's happening. I don't need to follow it every day. Okay so this is the uh, the sea ice uh, thickness as it is, and you'll see all of this ice here that's uh, been 
uh, totally um, eaten away. This is, I believe, that's Svalbard there. That's Norway Zimlia. That's the, uh, I think that's Severnaya Zimlia. So the area in the Barents Sea, the Kara and the Lapto completely gone. And um, we've been watching, or what needs to be watching is what happens in the Beaufort. So we've still got this, it's just holding on uh, as, as well as this. And we're just, this is the only area of multi-year ice remaining. Uh, hardly anything at all. And as you can see, the ice is retreating away from the Canadian archipelago. In her very good analysis that she could see how the ice was just uh, disappearing through these little inlets here. Uh, so here goes another view of sea ice uh, concentration um, that tells a story. You can just see how much blue ocean there is and uh, comparatively little um, uh, little ice and what ice is there apart from that area of uh, small area of multi-year ice above Canada uh, mostly it's just slush and very thin ice and here goes another view uh, so we're really interested in this sort of area around here uh, in the Beaufort and what's what's going to happen in the uh, in the next few weeks and this is I haven't got a date on this but this was how it looked uh, a few weeks ago I think this might have been at the end of last month uh, and as you recall there was quite a big storm that uh, went through the uh, the Beaufort Sea and broke up all of this ice and of course now it's all gone. And um, so here are the um, sea surface, well the, the temperature anomalies. So you can see at the moment it's very, very co comparatively warm in the, uh, about up to about 10 degrees warmer than, than the average. In, uh, in the Siberian sector, whereas it seems to be colder around uh, Greenland and maybe, I don't know whether it's just the movement of ice or whether there's been some refreezing. And these are the actual uh, temperatures. So you can see now that although it's still very warm, um, kind of in the Beaufort and um, you know above Siberia, uh, it's getting colder at the uh, at the uh, North Pole. So I've been following this. This is a um, a forecast for temperatures at the North Pole, and they've been, you know, last time I looked, they were hovering around zero. They got down to perhaps minus one, but now um, we're getting temperatures minus nine, minus eight, minus seven. Um, so that's enough. Uh, for um, for ice to start to reform at the North Pole, I think. Okay, so elsewhere, I uh, I just had a look at this. Um, this is uh, Dixon, uh, which is a, an island. You see uh, uh, Norway Zimlia here, the uh, Yamal Peninsula here. Um, so I looked up the temperatures for for this, uh, and this is what it said. Uh, so maximum temperatures, seven degrees, nine degrees, 10 degrees, nine degrees. So it's all about, I believe, 10 degrees warmer than what is the average. And here we are with sea surface temperature anomalies. So uh, yeah, 
you can get some understanding of kind of why the sea ice is uh, is melting around the edges still. Um, very high sea surface temperature anomalies and just a little area um, around the edge of the ice where it's colder. Amazing, really. Um, and yeah, I think oh, I think I showed this before. That's the temperature anomalies. Uh, now, this is the uh, the methane that's coming off, and it has been uh, for quite a while from Severnaya Zemlya. Um, and I've got some footage there that I'll I'll show. Uh, a movie shot. So all of this, you know, the light green, uh, even the darker green is very, very high methane levels. And of course, uh, th this in northern Siberia and uh, of um, Severnaya Zemlya, which is uh, spreading across the, uh, the Arctic Basin. Uh, so here goes another view of the same thing. This is from the uh, 6th of September. View. So you can just see how much um, methane is coming up. And I don't see anybody talking about this. This is uh, Scandinavia, and it's not so bad here, but other days I've seen just about the whole of Scandinavia covered in this, in, in this uh, methane eruption. So no one's ever um, tried to uh, explain that because I don't think that you you know you've got melting permafrost until you get right up to here so where that and and they're not highly industrialized society it's not China and India um, so that's always been a bit of a mystery to me and uh, people just don't bother and this is an explanation uh, Margo has been um, showing that there's been emissions coming out um, for, 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 for weeks and months and this was a, um, a paper that came out. New study reveals cracks beneath giant methane gushing uh, craters. So that goes a long way to explaining what we're seeing. So 250 million year old cracks in the seafloor feed greenhouse gas methane into giant craters in the Barents Sea. More than 100 craters presently expelling uh, enormous amounts of greenhouse gas into the ocean are found in the area. A very quick uh, look at this. This is from the yesterday, the t 10th of September. Um, because it's, it's really, really interesting uh, this area here above the Canadian archipelago is where, uh, if you look at uh, the US Navy site or anywhere, that's where the thickest ice is. So let's just have a look at, quickly at what this shows. So I'm just going to go in and you can see this is an area it shows this ice is probably moving down through these inlets, through this strait. Is it that Inares Strait? I'm not sure. But you can see how broken up the ice is. So this is uh, just short of 80 degrees north. And I... I said weeks ago um, that there would be 
scarcely any ice left um, that beyond uh, 80 degrees north. And it seems to be kind of largely the case because this is in the area where all the, the thick ice is supposed to be. This is not from the other side. So we're moving into cloud. We can't really tell that much here. So we'll just need to, I just need to do this to see kind of where we are. Um, and I just want to kind of see. So this is getting really close. And you can see how close the edge of the ice is to the North Pole. And this is this is the uh, cracking. So this will certainly be um, subject to uh, erosion from warm water underneath. So you, you can see just how um, close this is getting uh, to the North Pole. And then just very, very quickly, uh, there's this really, really, really strange uh, behavior. This is just uh, north of uh, Norway Zimlia. I mean, just really, really strange. And there's signs here um, of what uh, Margot and I call alt beaming. It's electromagnetic uh, kind of frequencies directed at the atmosphere, which uses clouds uh, like this. And then what in his name is this all about? Anyway, I'm not going to... So there's lots and lots of very strange activity going on here in the Russian sector of the Arctic. And I mean, it's anybody's guess what it all means. Um, uh, Paul Beckwith for a while now. I just can't go into the into such detail and of course I don't see eye to eye on some of his other views on things but he's really onto something here uh, he posted this a few hours ago on Facebook and he's asking the question sea ice extent the University of Bremen adjusts their graph for 2020 to match the NSIDC and JAXA seems very dubious and shady to me and he's asking why so he's uh showing first of all a plot uh for september the 10th from the university of bremen and a close-up of that and then september the 11th uh, a day later an adjusted graph and then also a close-up so let's just have a look so this this is how their thing looked on the 10th of um, 10th of September uh, and you can see the actual uh, 2020 line is kind of just over well, we'll have a look in a minute that's how it looks it's equal to or just gone below uh, but the very next day uh, this is what they do. So they've suddenly seen the light, uh, <laughs> seemingly. And bear in mind, of course, all this represents uh, slush that they, you know, it only has to be 15% uh, ice for them to regard it as such and include it in their figures. So, um, yeah, it's a bit dubious, especially after the polish down. Uh, and that's, that's what they're saying on September the 11th. So they said that on uh, September the 10th and they're saying that on September the 11th. Uh, now he's put out a, um, a, a video uh, in which he uh, cites this article. It seems to be very good. Growing undersea, underwater heat blob speeds the demise of Arctic sea ice. So that sounds like an honest article. And this is um, Paul's description uh, to his video uh, in this third of a new series of Arctic ice demise videos. I continue to chat about the demise of big, the big slushy in the Arctic Ocean. And he discusses 
in detail the recent peer-reviewed scientific papers on how Atlantic water, dense warm water, a couple of hundred metres below the sea ice has moved to within 80 metres of the bottom of the sea in the eastern Euro Basin and will likely keep the ocean from freezing up there in the winter. The heat in their Atlantic water <coughs> is enough to completely melt the entire Arctic Ocean ice three or four times over as it eventually makes its way near the surface over the entire basin. This already happens in the Barents Sea region and is spreading eastwards into the rest of the Arctic. And he also discussed how the so-called chimneys, where the Arctic Ocean water descends to complete the AMOC, the Arctic Meridional uh, Overturning Circulation, and how this process is being disrupted by Atlantification, thereby weakening the thermohaline process, leading us closer to a complete shutoff and then redistribution of uh, global ocean circulation Patterns 2020 is continuing to be full of unpleasant surprises for the teeming masses of humanity on Earth. And uh, this is um, a quote uh, from the article. In March, soon after arriving aboard the Polish Stern, a German icebreaker frozen into Arctic sea ice, Jennifer Hutchings watched as ice broke up around the house ship weeks earlier than expected. Even as scientists on the research crews scrambled to keep field instruments from blood plunging into the ocean, Hutchings, who studies ice deformation at Oregon State University, Corvallis, couldn't suppress a thrill at seeing the, um, the crack up as if she had spotted a rare bird. I got to observe firsthand uh, what I studied, she says. So I will leave the um, the links to uh, Paul's video and well, it seems to be the uh, season of fire. Um, I just want to take um, you through a few quick stories. I don't sure that this tells the whole story either, but anyway, because of summation. Okay, uh, so this is where the uh, these stories uh, come from, from this article. Uh, so I'm just going to take a few of her stories. This is, uh, let's not actually, it looks like San Francisco, but it's Lake Oroville. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'm doing this in no particular order. In Greece, a fire destroyed Greece's largest Maria refugee camp on the island of Lesbos on the 9th of September. Greek authorities on September the 10th were racing to shelter thousands of asylum seekers left homeless on Lesbos after the island's main migrant camp was gutted by back-to-back -back fires, which destroyed the official part of the camp, housing 4,000 people. Another 8,000 lived in tents and makeshift shacks around the perimeter, and many were badly dam damaged. And I haven't actually got... Um, photographs of all of these. In fact, in some cases, uh, this is a very indicative. I did a, a duck duck go search and I couldn't find photographs. Uh, so this is another one, a wildfire is currently raging in Athens, Greece. Um, so here goes the story from uh, Lesbos. Uh, fire destroys most of Europe's largest refugee camp on Greek island of Lesbos. Campaigners have long warned that the overcrowded conditions at the impoverished camp might lead to catastrophe. And uh, this uh, Brazil, uh, out of control forest fires burn the area of the Brazilian Patanal in rural Paconi, I don't know how, Mato Grosso, in Brazil, on August the 19th, the largest fire ever recorded in the rich biome. The Brazilian Pantanal, one of the largest tropical floodplains in the world, has been suffering since the end of July with the worst wildfires in its registered history. More than 12% or 16,500 square kilometres, almost the size of Kuwait, has already been burned. And the situation 
may get better only in October when it's expected to rain. So where have we heard this on the, on, on the news? Nowhere. So yeah, so this is, this is uh, a photograph from there. And there, I don't know quite, this looks like the Amazon. So this is not in very good order, but that's the Amazon burning. And then in Argentina, fire, wildfires burn in Casa Grande in August the 26th. In Cordoba, Argentina, wildfires fueled by wind and droughts are raging Argentina's Cordoba province threatening to destroy homes and forcing evacuations in some areas. So again, we don't hear anything about this. And then in Bulgaria, uh, significant damage was inflicted by the fires in Bulgaria in the Huskovo region, which destroyed more than 100,000 acres of forests, agricultural land, dry grass, and burned several agricultural buildings and houses in the village of Filipovci, uh, located in the Bulgarian-Turkish border. Six storks were rescued at a wildlife rescue center that is currently recovering. And of course, let's not forget the Arctic, um, especially Siberia. The Arctic is burning like never before, and that's bad news for climate change. Fires are releasing record levels of carbon dioxide, partly because they are burning ancient peatlands that have been a carbon sink. So that actually tells, tells the truth. Uh, this is just sort of starting to come out that actually most of our emissions these days are uh, carbon dioxide, which comes from wildfires, which is a sure indicator that we've crossed a trigger point, released numerous positive feedbacks, and that climate change or global warming is, um, is irreversible. So here goes some pictures from uh, Novosibirsk region. And finally, let's not forget America. Uh, it's all been in the headlines. Oregon faces the greatest loss of life in state history from wildfires as La Nina uh, threatens. Um, yeah, anyway, I can't read that. As wildfires move north from California, the state of Oregon is being engulfed in dangerous wildfires, some of the most destructive in its history as La Nina conditions drive some of the world worst wildfires seen in the American West in years. The weather pattern, ha, uh, the weather pattern, it's always a weather pattern, isn't it? Uh, has been blamed for the latest string of hurricanes that have hammered Gulf, Gulf Coast, the East Coast states over the past several months. As of last Wednesday, 47 active fires had burnt 374,000 acres in Beaver State, according to the Oregon Office of Emergency Management. And of course, um, we've got California. California endures uh, record beating kiln like heat as uh, fires rage, causing injuries. That's from several years, uh, several days ago. Um, there's lots more news, of course, coming out of California.